How super is this JVC Super VHSC camcorder? I'll find out on Thrifty AV. Growing up in the 80s, movies that aired on cable TV looked better than video rentals from the video store, and that's because VHS at 240 lines of resolution was not broadcast quality. But in 1985, a new format was introduced, Super VHS, that did bring VHS up to those specs. However, Super VHS never really caught on as a pre-recorded media because Laserdisc were already occupying that space. However, they did catch on for home recordings, and this is one of the units that that sold pretty well. This is a JVC SVHSC model number GRSXM 320U. SVHS came out in 1985, but this particular model came out many years later. I could not find a manufacturer date on this, but the user manual said copyright 2000, so I suspect this was made about that same time. And it has the features you would expect on a camcorder from the year 2000, including this flip out screen, a host of manual functions, and some effects. Let's go ahead and dig into the menu. To access the menu, this little toggle switch has to be down to Camera Pro. Okay, for the first set of menu items, I'm going to hit this menu button. And then you have a scroll wheel here that you can go through. Digital zoom, you can turn on and off. I leave it off. Telemacros for when you're shooting up close. SVHS mode, if you are loading SVHS tapes in here, you want that on, otherwise it'll record VHS quality. Tape length, I have it set to T30 because most of my tapes are T30s. Let's hit next, which I think should be on the bottom, not the top. Okay, it can display record time. I usually leave that off. In fact, I leave all the timers off. I don't want a date time stamp on it. Uh, JLIP is for connecting this thing to a computer. In demo mode, I leave off. But those aren't the only menu items. These two buttons are for effects. This one that says effects is transition effects. Mosaic, shutter, slide, door, uh, CW corner, WW window, and off. I leave it off because I do my transition effects in post-production. This PAE button offers other menu items. Sepia is old movie looking. Sports is a fast shutter speed. ND's neutral density, it just darkens the shot. Fog makes it look like you're in a fog. It actually increases the black level. Twilight is good for shooting in the dark, like if you're shooting fireworks. One two thousandth is even a faster shutter speed than sports. Negative makes everything negative. And then off is where I leave it. This knob over here, if you push it in, that's how you get to your manual settings. So right now the focus is on auto. I can uh, switch it to manual focus if I want to. Exposures on auto, I could go manual on that. White balance, again. Wide is where you can go between a 3 by 4 aspect ratio and then a widescreen aspect ratio. Okay, SLX is for shooting in low light. I leave that on normal unless I'm shooting in low light. I don't put titles on my videos until post-production and I don't put date time stamps on my videos. SP and EP mode is actually its own button down here. So to change from 
EP to SP, you hold down that button and then it'll change. You have to hold it down for a couple of seconds. Over here I have controls for the light. You can have it off, you can have it auto when it needs to be on, you can have it on. Right now it is on. Now this is a SVHS C camera, the C standing for compact because the tapes are this size compared to this size for a regular VHS. Now what you can do if you want to play it in a regular VHS player is you can get an adapter like this, load it in, and it'll pull the tape through and then it looks just like a regular VHS tape and it'll load into a VCR just like a regular VHS tape. On the battery charger when you're charging a battery this light will blink when that light goes solid the battery is fully charged. You can also use the battery charger as an AC adapter but when you're using it as an AC adapter the battery will not charge. There's one more feature I want to talk about before I go outside and shoot some footage and that's Super VHS ET. This is a modification to the VHS standard that allows you to get SVHS quality on cheaper VHS tape. I don't think Panasonic or any other company has implemented that so you'll need JVC equipment to use SVHS ET. I changed shirts for this because it was pretty hot out there. To transfer my footage to DVD I could use my JVC SVHS VCR along with the adapter but I want to check the playback capability of this camcorder so I'm going to use it instead. And to transfer that footage I'm going to use this S-Video cable. It keeps luminance and chroma signals separate and helps prevent an artifact called dot crawl. On the DVD recorder there's different modes you can use. I'm going to use XP mode which is the highest quality and has the shortest record time. I just noticed that this JVC has a mono audio output so I'm using a mono to stereo adapter before I run it into the Samsung DVD recorder. Before I test the footage with the SVHS cam corner I wanted to get a baseline with my Panasonic HCX1000. I'm recording in 4K mode. I have auto everything, auto exposure, auto focus. I'm using a shotgun microphone to pick up my voice. There is a little bit of wind blowing, so you might hear a little bit of wind noise. But this is what my normal camera looks like and sounds like in automatic mode. I'm now going to switch over to the JVC SVHS camcorder. For my initial test footage, I'm going to be recording on this Fuji SVHS C tape, new old stock. I'm now recording on the JVC SVHS. I am using an SVHS tape in SVHS mode. I'm recording at SP speed. The sun is hiding behind a cloud right now, but it's about to come out. I have the JVC SVHS in automatic mode, so it should adjust for the brightness setting when the sun comes out. The wind's blowing a little bit and I'm using the internal microphone on the JVC. So we'll see how much wind noise the internal microphone picks up. So this is what the JVC SVHS sounds like and looks like. Oh, and the sun is out now. So we'll see how well the automatic settings deal with that. I've now switched to a widescreen mode. I don't know if this JVC has an anamorphic widescreen mode or if it's going to put black bars on the top and the bottom. I'll find out in post-production. For the VHS mode recording, I'm going to use this new old stock Maxell TC30. I'm now recording in SVHS ET mode, which is a JVC technology, 
that should allow me to get SVHS quality on a regular VHSC tape. Now the cloud just covered up the sun, so I'm now in the shadow, so that'll test the automatic settings on this camera to see if it can deal with shadows and then direct sunlight. Also, the wind's blowing a little bit and that'll test the internal microphone on this camera to see how much wind noise it picks up. So this is SVHS ET mode recorded at SP speed. This is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like. I'm still on SVHS ET mode, but I've changed the speed setting from SP to EP. This lets you fit more footage on a tape, but it will probably sacrifice the quality. The sun just came out from behind the clouds, so we'll see how the auto exposure deals with that. I now have a regular VHSC tape loaded. I'm recording it in VHS mode. The tape speed is SP, auto focus, and auto exposure. This is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like. I've switched speeds now from SP to EP. This allows you to fit more footage on the tape, but it sacrifices quality. Of course, none of these modes can compete with a modern SD camera. Just a little side note, when I bought this camcorder, there was a tape in it with personal footage on it. Now, it wasn't anything too personal, but you might want to take your tape out before you sell or give away your camcorder. Well, that concludes my evaluation of the JVC Super VHSC camcorder. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.